use them to their fullest. I pray that these efforts would be a testament to your goodness and that all the glory would be yours. Amen. Amen. I say that because I need that right now. I, I use this journal a lot to write a lot. A lot. You see me bring this when I come for words and wisdom. Um, but I started writing and it was nice and pretty and then it ended up being <laughs> a big story. So I think you know what's coming up. So here we go. Have you ever felt like the exception? Accept can mean to exclude, though. What you'll find in my life is that I excluded a lot of my emotions. I left out. I suppressed. I secluded those unwanted emotions and memories to present myself in a perfect way. Well, here I am. Real, raw, and probably emotional. I was born Jennifer Lee Jackson, six pounds, eight ounces, hazel eyed, two doll, as my dad would say. Born to see the world as it is, he would continue. My childhood was filled with catching fireflies on late summer nights, breakfast breads as big as, big as I could see on Saturday mornings. I watched my, my parents help other people when likely they couldn't help themselves. My mom was my Girl Scout leader and my dad was my softball coach. Big sense. There were those nights where I watched my parents drink alcohol beyond their limits. I watched my mom fall one night. I can vividly remember her face bleeding, her knees scraped up. We swept those nights under the rug. No one ever talked about them except me and my sister in the dark of the nights holding each other. We promised each other we would never be like them. I had my first drink of alcohol, New Year's Eve, 1999. No, not for me. I didn't want to be out of control. As teenagers are easily influenced, I began drinking with my friends. Oh, but I had all these obligations. I played sports. I even earned my Girl Scout Gold Award. I graduated in the top of my class. Alcohol doesn't care. I left home and I went to college. I was engaged by 18, married at 20. I graduated nursing school and I worked as a pediatric oncology nurse. In that world, death and dying consumed. While childhood cancer is 90% curable, it's the 10% that don't make it that absolutely drain you emotionally. Emotions that I never dealt with. It makes you question every part of your relationship with God. Why those beautiful, joyful, innocent souls? I went on to have my own children and moved on from the pediatric world. By the time I had my last baby, I had developed a relationship with a great, beautiful, wonderful, God-fearing woman named Nicole. Nicole could light up a room and light fire under your tush at the same time. She always smiled and stayed positive. In March of 2020, she lost her life to cancer. She was my best friend. Synovial sarcoma, a very rare aggressive genetic cancer, took her life. Her mom's only daughter, her three boys without a mother. Never once did she lose her faith in Jesus Christ, her faithfulness to him unmatched by any person I've ever in fact, she brought me closer to Christ. Except, I never dealt with my emotions. I was broken. I felt guilt. Why didn't he take me? I never tried to heal. I had noticed a huge shift in my marriage through the years. The hurt becoming immeasurable. Being called worthless wears on you after a while. To keep our privacy, I'll leave it at this. Marriages do not survive with tan tangible things. When the effort to love is lost, so is the marriage. Emotional abuse, sinful nature, and an assortment of other underlying issues led to our demise. In August of 2020, I filed for divorce. I failed. I was shattered. I was broken. While I stayed physically strong during these circumstances, I found myself knowing emotionally I was beyond repair. One glass of wine didn't do it for me anymore. I was looking forward to the entire bottle. Remember my story about my mom? I have the same story. I fell in my garage, I busted open my nose and my shoulder. I called my sister for sympathy. What I got was her yelling and screaming at me. Where is my sister? I suppressed all of my emotions to a place I did not have to deal with them. The lowest part of my life, or the proverbial rock bottom, happened on a weekend my kids were not with me and they were not within my reach. They were with their dad, happy and healthy. The silence was deafening. This mistake not only happened once, but twice. 
I won't go into any great details unless you want to know. I will tell you on an individual basis. I think you can imagine what I'm about to say. Alcohol, a wrecked vehicle, jail, and more shame and guilt than you can imagine. There's absolutely no reason why I should be standing here today except God is not done with me. With his mercy on my simple soul, all I have is a skull fracture. My once seemingly perfect life turned to anxiety, depression, and panic. Y'all can even go to the grocery store. It was a good day when I could just wake up and brush my teeth. I talk an awful lot about my accomplishments. This is the road that I'm talking about that isn't traveled. But I am here to tell you that no matter how long you have traveled in the wrong direction, it is never too late to turn around. You can become redeemed. You can receive and give forgiveness. You can give up your pride, you can surrender, and you can seek help. You see, Satan is not forthcoming in his work. It's subtle, cunning, crafty. He delights in deception when you are hurt and a victim of your circumstance, death, abuse of marriage, abuse of alcohol, not dealing with your emotions. You become handicapped to God. Unable to fill your potential because of your hurtful wounds. The more we are afflicted with pride and sin in general, the harder our hearts become to God. God is, for us, the battle that belongs to him. He wants to purify our hearts. Satan wants to spoil your heart. Pride doesn't allow you to deal with the honest truth, and the honest truth without distortion is you never change when you yourself don't see a problem. You never change when you yourself don't see a problem. I'm here to tell you, a family marriage, losing a very best friend, not dealing with emotions caused me to be an erupting volcano. Not once, but twice I made the same mistake with alcohol. So let me jump back a little bit in time. Growing up, I, I, I always felt a wall between God and myself. I begged for God's presence in my life, the way I saw it in others. I felt apart and alone and unable to see his good grace. I came to know Jesus in my teens when I was able to drive myself to church. I went to a non-denominational church. I was saved at 16. I found great security in knowing Jesus as the anchor to my soul. I was baptized at 19 and joined the Catholic Church, mostly to appease my future in-laws. Except, after I got married, I didn't make Jesus, church, anything a priority. I found myself in the exact same place as my life started to spiral out of control. Feeling God had let me down, and I was detached. What a mystery as to why God chose me at this time in my life to present me with challenges I wasn't sure I could handle. My mistakes have brought me to my knees. I have given complete surrender to Jesus Christ. I could have killed myself, someone else, or both. I remember praying on my knees to God, please take this away from me. Tell me, Lord, that you will be a waymaker for me. Show me your abundance and give me a miracle. This is what you can take to the bank. If he brought you to it, he's already prepared you with every resource necessary for you to accomplish it. Good God, we are all a gift, imperfect, unclean, but a gift nonetheless. I know y'all remember a few weeks back when Blaine uh, gave a good sermon about our gifts. Peter 4.10, as each of us has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. The Lord has given me gifts through this, giving, encouragement, mercy, and I'm working on leadership. Getting knocked down in life is a given. This is God testing our faith. We should stay close to God during our hardship because we know our reward for him. Our reward for our endurance is not only confidence in him, but an eternal reward for obedience. Getting up off the ground is a choice. If all you can do is crawl, you better start crawling. For I, the Lord, your God, hold your right hand and say to you, do not fear, I will help you. Isaiah 41, 13. You grow from the most challenging obstacles in life. Learning why God tests our faith has been a huge life lesson for me. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. James 1, 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. I can stand here and bathe in my shame and guilt, or I can use my testimony to let you know what God is doing in my life. A huge hug and big thank you to Charm for inviting me to church mm-hmm. until I said yes. A big hug and a thank you to Tracy for opening a gym and giving me another sanctuary. If it wasn't for renewing my relationship with Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be here. No man, woman, life, circumstance, Satan can ever remove you from the will of God. Everyone has a purpose. It is his plan. He is in control. We can blame others for our suffering, or we can turn to be free of anger, resentment, jealousy, revenge, bitterness, by way of trusting God. When Jesus was betrayed, he did not do wrong in return. Jesus told us to forgive others, and God forgives us in an unlimited way. We are to be rooted and grounded in the love of God. The word of God becomes the root to our heart. And it manifests as love, joy, mercy, kindness, goodness, peace, and self-control. Satan doesn't like that, but I like that. And I'm striving to be less like me and more like Jesus. Amen. Please don't get me wrong. This escape from weakness hasn't been easy. I told you I made the same mistake twice because of my pride. It takes effort. It has been challenging to heal spiritually. To avoid relapse, I am actually very active and involved with a therapist. She is Christian-based and has led me down a path to healing. I make a conscious decision every single day to be on the path of the Lord that is strong and obedient. Jesus suffered, Paul suffered, Peter suffered, Jennifer King suffered. The willingness to be obedient to the Lord brings humility, peace, and a refreshed outlook. We cannot escape hard places and challenges, but we can overcome by falling in love with Jesus. Lastly, I attend a faith-based fellowship called Celebrate Recovery. It is not just for alcohol and drugs. It is for any person, meaning all of you, suffering from codependency, gambling, mental health, selfishness, infidelity, grief, divorce, doesn't matter. God does not want us to be independent and separate. We are to care and nurture each other. We can help each other in a way to restore and create hope for for a peaceful future. Trials will come upon each and every one of us as it is God's way to reveal our heart. I'm telling you, disobedience is not the option. Evidently, I need some training on my (laughs) I am here to tell you that I give Jesus all of me. I choose to believe in him. I choose to ask him to make my heart clean. I choose to trust him, and I choose to tell him every single day that he is the Almighty. My name is Jennifer King. Here I am standing, not crawling. I'm not my circumstances, but I am a faithful believer in Jesus Christ. I surrender. I'm healed. I'm redeemed. I'm happy. I'm sober. Even when you're shattered, you can be restored. I have survived the dark, so I can be.
have no prayer. You know, we all, there's, gosh, there's so many hurts in life. We all kind of treat the hurts in life. And sometimes it leads to uh, situations that we don't, we don't decide. Uh, I thank you. Father God, we just thank you for leading us.